Lucas Kids. It's Lucas Kids. It's Lucas Kids. Well, hello, my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? Welcome to another episode of Lucas Kits. I pulled one out of the stash. This is an oldie but goodie, and everybody loves to look at Johans, and I felt like looking at one today, one I haven't taken a look at in a while. I really like this kit a lot, and uh, this is a pretty good uh, um, condition kit to really get, give you guys an opportunity, if you've never seen one of these, to see it. Now, BG has mentioned before, like on uh, the, our last Model Car Guys episode, about Johan kits. There's a little game to play, uh, what color is the plastic, and sometimes you get really surprised. <laughs> I've seen this kit in so many colors, but what's cool about this one is this is a rare one that is in white. And this is a very well preserved kit. Uh, probably my best one. I have a few of these. No, none are for sale. I do have quite a few of these uh, um, kudas because I, I like this kit. And I do plan on building them, even this one, but this is probably the best one I have so it's probably at the bottom of the list of ever getting built I'll probably just hold on to it but to start off we'll take a look at these aged uh, instructions here pretty simple but good instructions Johan I always like Johan's instructions they're pretty down to the point everything's real easy to understand these kits were back in the day were incredibly detailed especially this one this is probably I think one of Johan's better, not the best, but better detailed kit. I mean, right here you see, here's something that is not not uh, normal for a uh, Johan kit. Look at separate rear springs, separate rear end. And we're going to go take a look at those right now. And it's just a, just a mighty, mighty cool, cool kit. But we'll start off by, well, everything's all together here, but let's take a look at that body. I'm going to go ahead and move the box out of the way so we can get good looks at this. Now, a lot of the Mopar fans are probably going to agree with me out there. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, but there's just something about this kit and what keeps this kit so desirable to this day is out of all of the early 70s Barracudas done, this has the nicest body proportions. If you don't believe me, and you think I'm wrong, put it down in the comments. I want to hear what you say. You know, I, I am not a 100% aficionado on these old uh, old Mopars, but from heavy Mopar guys have told me, yeah, this is the kit. This is the body. Um, just really, really well done. Ravel came out with the, the 70 uh, version of this kit, and uh, um, this is the 71 and I and I haven't looked at this in a long time and fairly recently looking at the at the Revell kit and I still have to say yeah this the body proportions are just so much better chassis now it's a little light on the detail but it's still pretty accurate and pretty cool I mean you can make a very very cool cool underside if you want to detail up and make it accurate you could probably start adding some stuff to this which which is this is just a great basis for for a typical mopar underpinning uh, you know of a unibody chassis and uh, you know you got these big clunky things here but that's all stuff that can be worked with and you can go ahead and you got the basics down that if you wanted to get in there and put all your lines and stuff and another cool thing that i talked about in the last video uh with the novas i love how it has a separate gas tank now I know, and we'll be looking a little bit, they're a little light on the details of the front suspension. All the front suspension components are a bit um, simplified. And the rear end, a little bit, but it, it still is really great to work with. As long as we've got this, because this was all together, let's take a look at the interior tub. Early days, you didn't see this a lot, but to have a cool race car, you can't have a back seat, and this gave you... No back seat, which made it difficult if you wanted to build this into a street car. Eh, you know, you could do it. it. You could do it with this kit, but um, there's some a little bit of work you'd have to do. But it's pretty basic. It doesn't show any carpet. I like that how there's no carpet uh, detail in there. Just 
perfect representation of an early 70s pro stock race car. Now, get the kit back here. Let's move on. We're going to take a look at the chrome tree next. Check that out. Uh, not a fan of keystones, but this has probably the greatest keystones for doing an old drag car because the especially the fronts they're so so thin and then you got like just a perfect depth for the rear but everything else look at that dana 60 rear end cover the carburetors the dominator carburetors are actually pretty cool you could do a lot with those you could drill that top out it's cool that the top is out you could drill that out and get down in there because it's already kind of has your vent you know your your venturi's down in there um just just really really well done that's pretty accurate steering wheel you just get yourself nice wood grain that's a pretty nice and pretty to scale uh steering wheel that they ran in those cars back in those days really good stuff look at this look at the shifter it's a little it's it's a t-handle shifter and look at that boot it's all separate that's pretty pretty outstanding so we have here here we go cool headers pretty basic but you know they they fit in that car beautifully uh i believe these are just the the axles you see look they say rear and front um as far as a good dana 60 rear end it's okay you know of course that cover is beautiful but you have somewhere here we see if i can find it real quick i'm not sure where it's at but there's like a a front chunk that comes out off like like the way a Ford 9 inch would be which isn't accurate for the Dana 60 and I can't seem to find that part but I know they're around that might be the one missing part in this kit is that that rear end piece I also have a missing collector it looks like I'm missing one of the uh, header collectors and I'm missing the front snout of the rear end which eh, it's not a big deal yeah that's not 100% accurate, but still when you get this together from the rear, it makes an actual pretty nice looking Dana rear end Along having that chrome differential cover you get that look real good And then here a bit of the front suspension where it's very simplified You you just got your lower control arms here and uh, That's pretty much it is the lower control arms a, a, just a stick representing that uh, torsion bar and uh the torsion bar bracing, you know, that goes under the floor. Very, very basic. It'll work. It, it looks okay. Um, you could probably kit bash from other kits and get a little bit better look if you wanted to go for a little more detail. There's that stock gas tank that you could put in if you choose. Does have great, great fiberglass racing bucket seats and a very nice roll bar, which I'm not sure if they had, at this point in time, they were running this, even this uh, advanced of a roll bar. Not really a roll cage. Most of the time in the early 70s of the early days of Pro Stock, they were running like without that <laughs> right there. And it was just an A-shaped, you know, from Lakewood. They just would bolt those in and that was their safety. Um, by this car represents the 71 season they might have gone to a full roll bar like that maybe <laughs> we'll have to look that up in pictures you're watching the Lucas C channel on YouTube then we got a pretty nicely detailed hemi block right there in the heads detail you know Johan's always been good with their engine detail the engine's very nicely done in the whole front cover there. Now, I kind of don't know what's going on here. I may be wrong. I'm not that well versed in the Mopar language, but it looks like we have ourselves a standard or stick or four speed gearbox here for the transmission. But it looks like with a little plate under there, that looks like that bell housing would be for the automatics. So I don't know if I'm wrong. I'm out of my mind. Whatever this is about to come off. Um, you guys tell me down the bottom. I'm sure you'll straighten my act up for me. And then we've got this intake right here, which is a wonderful representation of what Sox and Martin and a lot of other, other teams were running for a dual high-rise uh, uh, manifold that went onto the Hemis. And you have the plenum here, and then there's even uh, for under the carburetors a little bit of space or plate to bring the carburetor up a bit. 
But that was just a good looking intake manifold with even the bolt bolt down uh, detail right there you got your lower valances rest of your little bits and pieces for the engine and the shock geez look at those shocks those are some of the nicest shocks I've seen in a model kit I never really noticed that before in this kit that's that's really awesome and then we're to the last tree uh, looks like I'm also missing a a wheel in this kit so that's three three pieces missing in this kit um, firewall very blank that's cool but then you know they really kind of smooth the little details down on this kit is probably could be a good thing could be a bad thing I actually kind of like the way it looks myself it gives me room to do what I want so it's kind of blank canvas and then there's the core support simplified but I tell you remember this kit came out in the early 70s, so this was really mind-blowing. Look at that dashboard. Again, very, very soft and smooth on the detail, but not really, I mean, I'm not hating it. And Johan always had some of the coolest flex fans. They really did look good <laughs> in their kits. And then we have over here, you know, the hood, which molded on, already opened up, molded on. Hood scoop, and here's the top of the hood scoop. And Sox and Martin ran various different types of hood scoops. And this kind of limits you to one style that, that you're kind of stuck with. But uh, it still, it puts together pretty good. This is the only Johan kit that I have that is in this kind of condition. One, the tires, still in their bag. And the glass, still in the bag. So, if any of you have in your collection Johan kits, do you have bagged up, uh, bagged up tires and uh, and glass? I have never seen this. I wonder if somebody did this, or I don't know if that came from the factory. I've never seen this in a Johan kit, but everything seems to be in there and looks very good. All they busted from the trees, but I always like this kit. I always liked how this kit had side glass. You can see it. You can see the side glass is floating around in there. And then, remember BG brought this up, they would uh, do the tail lights at, at the, the Johan factory in clear and then they would kind of put a, a paint, it looks like, over them, if you can kind of see. I don't, know if I, can get you. I don't want to open the bag up, I'm sorry, but you can kind of see how there's a, a little bit of a void of, of the, the clear paint on there. They probably just shot some clear over them and that was it, some red clear. And then... These tires, honestly, the Johan drag tires are, these are my, especially the front ones, they are my favorite set of tires to use on early, you know, 70s super stock cars, pro stocks of the early 70s, even super stock cars. I like building a lot of super stock cars. But the one thing that I always loved about these Johan tires was how they would do one side as this a Goodyear, and the other side would be a Firestone 500. They did the same with the slick Firestone 500, and what I think is like a really great looking blue streak slick, representing a 70s blue streak slick for Goodyear, was this side had the Goodyear. And that's the side that popped in, but it looks really good when it's popped in. But I love these 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 Johan uh, slicks and front runners, just beautiful. But this is it. This is the Johan Sox and Martin seventy one Barracuda. Love this kit. Wow. I uh, I really want to build one now. <laughs> oh yeah, and we're looking. See how it's very smooth in the detail. But boy oh boy. A modeler can get in there and really spruce this up because you've got such a clean slate. I know these things go for big money if you were ever on the fence to get this, but you were willing to pull the trigger because you really wanted this kit and you really wanted to build a very, very nice Barracuda, especially the Sox and Martin car or any of the uh, early pro stock cars or a nice super stock car. This is really an outstanding kit. For the day, it was amazing. Just an amazing kit. But there it is. That is the... This is just funny. Here's one of my other ones. This is not the same kit. 
Let me just get this out of the way. We're going to just show you. Let's take a guess. What do you think we got under here? An orange one. <laughs> but they're all good. Real quick, you know what? I didn't even go over the box art. So let's just take a look at the box art. The box art was just a work of art. you know, And it was really cool how they had Buddy Martin and Ronnie Socks over here. And the Jake, Jake King, the great mechanic. That really was the backbone of their organization. I mean, he's the guy who made these cars and the customer cars work. And this is always a cool, you know, little story about Sox and Martin. But uh, that was always a beautiful little painting right there that they would have on the on the uh, on the side. And then the other side would show you all the accoutrement. <laughs> yeah. Just. A really really cool model kit well I want to thank you all for watching I hope you enjoyed this one I'm having fun starting to get back into doing some Lucas kits I'm gonna do plenty 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 more of them and uh, well go on over to the Teespring check out the stuff if you want to be a producer go over to my patreon get on with all them it's be great to have you and I appreciate it it helps the channel so much and all that's down in the description below and I'll tell you what I'm gonna say it I'm gonna say it once go out and build model cars why cuz they're fun they're really really fun here's the producer Kids, it's Lucas Kids, it's Lucas Kids.